Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we'll continue to look at these last few chapters in our notes. I was talking about the importance of prophetic teams and how it's all the more effective when we practice this. So as pastors, we could think of options, think of opportunities where we encourage our people to flow at the prophetic. But Whenever we talk about the prophetic uh, later on, that uh, pastoring a prophetic church also requires some alertness. So, uh, when the prophetic, when teams are flowing, the prophet, as a pastor, we also need to be able to guide them. So that that would be important. So we'll we'll talk about next uh, chapter here, chapter fourteen. Uh, this is regarding the prophetic church. So a prophetic church is a church or a family of believers, or a group of believers who hear from God in the now, in the present. So it's not uh, only about a message from God, but what we are doing is we are encouraging people to love what God is offering us today the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we are helping people understand the benefits of flowing in the gifts of the Spirit because the church has to be built up. That's what uh, Jesus said. He said, I will build my church and the gifts of the Spirit are helpful in strengthening the church, in establishing the church. And so when we teach our people has to say what happens, you know, their desire for the gifts of the Spirit and we have learned how prayerfulness, being very, you know, being in prayer, you cannot have the flow of the prophetic without prayer. And prayer is, is a place which is also in intimacy with the Lord. So what the church is really being called to is more than flowing in the gifts. It's for intimacy. The call is for intimacy. So we calling people to intimacy. They uh, Grow closer to increase in prayer, and then you know, we see the flow of these uh, gifts from their lives. And as a church, that that begins to happen, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. So prophetic people will be committed to intimacy. They'll be committed to prayer. Uh, they will be committed uh, not just prayer. You could say intercession and prayer even. And it's only when they commune with the Lord that. Uh, it, it is uh, a place where we can know the heart of and then release from what God is actually saying. So uh, why should we uh, be a prophetic church? Because God is speaking now. Uh, is there anything wrong with us uh, taking up the content of wonderful churches in history and uh, using their messages. Uh, maybe those messages were preached 10 years ago or 20 years ago, 50 years ago. No, there's no problem. But you see, God spoke something specific to them in their times. And today he is speaking to us something very specific. Uh, and, and that is why when we choose to be a prophetic church, what we are saying is, yes, we appreciate uh, you know, uh, the messages that have come to others in the past. We are grateful for the word of God. The word of God, the written word of God is our standard. And yet, you know, as the Bible says, the sheep hear his voice. We as a sheep want to hear his voice for now, for today. What is God doing today? What is the move of the spirit? is taking place today because the direction in which god is leading us today so the prophetic church is willing to receive the now word how is it that the, the church can become a prophetic church or a congregation can become a prophetic congregation when we equip them Okay, so equipping them would mean we teach them about a prophetic and uh, also provide opportunities to practice the prophet. Now, uh, they may do it right initially, they may make mistakes. Uh, so through their experience, they are being built up. And all along, you know, we provide a safe, a safe environment, we help them correct their mistakes and keep guiding them on. And as we do that, believers are trained now. 
not just knowledge in terms of knowledge but also in terms of using the gift uh, and then they become more confident to actually serve uh, in the gifts of the holy spirit so that's how we build up the church here in pvc we are all aware we have uh, uh, we operate at the gifts during our services we uh, encourage people to operate at the gifts normal live group setting or even uh, people are hanging out together any other time as well we say okay hear from god hear from god and you minister that to others uh, we also have weekend schools weekend schools are especially uh, tailored to teach people on the gifts of the spirit the next one that's coming up is a weekend school uh, on the gifts of the spirit so we'll talk about all nine gifts of the holy spirit and how to move it there are usually practice sessions which are a part of the weekend school so people gain confidence as they allow uh, the holy spirit to give them words and uh, you know as as they are led to pray for people so on and so forth so that's the process uh, it is it going to take time yes it may take time and as a leader as a pastor it needs to uh, give it that kind of time that it requires what are some of the pitfalls uh, pitfalls are uh, you know sometimes people uh, may not pursue intimacy they know a little bit about the gifts and in a very superficial way they keep going with uh, what they know so uh, instead of really sitting of the lord hearing from the lord and giving a genuine word because of familiarity they may they may do things in a very rough haphazard way uh, that can cause uh, you know challenges uh, or the other challenge could be that now that people are beginning to no uh, if the gifts of the spirit they can also have a surprise uh, that oh god is using me uh, uh, and uh, they may not know how exactly to relate with us in the right way to cut that there are areas that want to imagine we are all functioning in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that there are mighty testimonies. What happens is we look down on the other churches and say, oh, we are better than that. So these the bits that one must actually avoid. If we are a leader, we must be careful. Helping us be strong so that we can be a blessing to the other church of God. So that's how. what will happen if we keep guiding the people uh, to flow in the gifts of the spirit and build them up. We'll have a strong church uh, which will make a great impact because we know that the gifts of the spirit are made manifest to build up the body. So the body will be built up step by step. And um, we, when we hear the voice of God, uh, it's, it's amazing, right? Like, for example, let's say God says, okay, call for a meeting, and we have a meeting, and what if it turns into a revival, right? You never know. So you never really know the great plans that God has when we are obedient to his promptings. So a prophetic church, hearing from God, and we are just doing different things, it's exciting because so much more God can do when we are in step with him. So the results are uh, those of impact on uh, us individuals, our church community, and the uh, city, nation at large. So coming to the pastor, a pastor who wants his congregation to be prophetic, uh, what are some things that uh, uh, are you know, important for him? Uh, he must be a pastor who is not uh, happy to score. Sometimes it's just easy to do church in a uh, conventional way. Just keep going with it. People are happy, we are happy, church is growing. So it's fine. But you know that there is uh, God is asking us to earnestly desire, desire that we prophesy. So ask uh, desires. He can gifts of the spirit that you see 
some of the challenges that can happen now, things can get somewhat messy. Uh, because you see, when there are people, let's say uh, 10 people for uh, any pastor, there are enough challenges already, right? Because we're dealing with people, they may have questions, things may go wrong relationally. So things happen. So as a pastor, you're 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 ministering to them, but you're also helping manage uh, all the people challenges that that happen. Now, if you have a congregation of fifty, then you have so many more people that you must be caring for. Imagine you have a congregation of whatever five hundred, one thousand. So you have those many people. Uh, how are you going to guide them when they flow in the prophetic? That's the question that you have to ask yourself. So if everyone starts practicing the prophetic, uh, sometimes even good and sincere attempts of prophesying could go wrong. So how will a pastor deal with it wisely, politely, to correct them in such a way that they will not stop operating in the gifts, but they'll just try to develop and improve the gifts? Okay. So you see, these are all the, the questions before a pastor. How are you going to deal with it? Uh, and so it's like you're taking on more work because that's how God wants you to build the church. Uh, so for a pastor, it can be challenging. But if a pastor uh, is thinking strategically, it's possible to guide people. It's possible to develop people to practice their gifts in a, a, a humble and in an accurate way. Okay. So in Proverbs, it says, uh, 14, Proverbs 14, 4, when no oxen are, the trough is clean, but much increase comes by the strength of an ox. So basically, it says that whenever there's a lot of work going on, there tends to be chaos. Imagine, you know, you're setting up this hall. Uh, when the hall is being set up, doesn't look pretty. You have dust and you have things here and there. So it's very messy when we're trying to do something good. When work is happening, things are messy. That's what that verse says. So it's a good thing. You know, we we may have issues, but these are good issues to deal with. Uh, we shouldn't be like, oh, I don't, I don't want any issues. But if some good constructive uh, progress is happening, then Yes, there will be some issues, but a pastor should be willing to deal with it in a nice way. Uh, so it's okay. A challenge this will come up, but uh, uh, as we keep dealing with it in a wise way, the people will be built up and we'll have more accuracy. Uh, it will The right way of delivering the message by each person will in turn impact the church in a positive way. So that, that's how the congregation should be uh, trained up and a pastor should think about this. A pastor prophet, okay, that's the next uh, topic here in our uh, notes. What is a pastor prophet? See, it's basically a pastor who's shepherding the church, but a one who hears from God. Um, so hears from God for what? Hears from God for which season the church is in right now. Here's from God to appoint leaders. Here's from God to prepare the sermon, the topics that we must be actually uh, ministering to the to the people. Here's from God uh, for various things. Right? Everything hears from God and ministers to them. And it is when the pastor is hearing from the Lord that when, when we are actually ministering that it brings refreshment, it brings motivation, uh, it, it brings you know the leading of the Lord into people's lives. It's something amazing, something beautiful takes place. So I just want to share, like uh, during my uh, master's program, I was not in Bangalore. I had shifted to uh, another city. Uh, and over there, I would attend the church, and I would always love to uh, hear our APC Bangalore sermons. So since everything was getting uploaded online, I would keep listening and I would try to tune into the, the Sunday sermon okay, uh, there also. But I would always be amazed about how what is being spoken of in another, you know, another part of the world is applicable to me where I am at. And it would be exactly the word that I want for that week. Uh, so that's prophetic. Unless we hear from God, I don't think people can be blessed like that. Uh, being prophetic has its wonderful advantages because that word will minister 
so powerfully to people. And that's why we desire for uh, us to become a prophetic uh, church and for a pastor to be a pastor prophet where you're, you're hearing from God and you're doing whatever God has asked you to do and it will really uh, work wonders. So yes, that's a little bit about uh, the prophetic church. Now we can go ahead and talk a little about women as prophetic ministers. Uh, anything about the prophetic church? Any questions, thoughts? I just have to stay in faith when I don't hear you all talk. So I should have faith that yes, everything is okay. Everything is understood. As fast as good. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Thank you, thank you, John. Okay, so let's uh, now look at women as prophetic ministers. Uh, can women prophesy? Is it biblical? We have these questions. When we look at the uh, word of God, looking at the Old Testament, there were women who, you know, they were called as prophetesses. So there was Miriam, who was the sister. Uh, it, it says about in Exodus 15, verse 20, Miriam the prophetess. So that's, you know, that's like amazing. The Bible is called the prophetess. So prophetess, uh, in, in the, under the Old Testament, we know that there were certain people, right, that were, were called by God to flow in, in the gift of prophecy. So she's somebody who was in the office of a prophet. She's known as a prophetess. You have Deborah, a leader, uh, and she's also called as prophetess. Deborah, a prophetess. Judges 4, verse 4. So the Bible says that the, there were women who God chose to be prophetesses. Okay. Uh, you have another uh, lady known as uh, Hulda. Hulda uh, she's also known as a prophetess. Uh, Isaiah's wife is also uh, called as a prophetess in uh, Isaiah chapter 8, verses 1, to 3. So there were women under the old covenant who were in the office of the prophet. Now coming to the New Testament, were there women who were in the prophetic office or they were uh, flowing in the prophetic ministry? Well, yes, Anna, the elderly uh, lady, the daughter of Samuel in Luke chapter 2, uh, she is called as a prophetess. So yes, very clearly, but in the New Testament, you find people who are prophetesses. What about the early church after the uh, death, uh, you know, burial, resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, when the Holy Spirit was poured out, did it still continue? Did God still allow women to prophesy? Philip's daughters are a classic example. Now, very, uh, we can understand but they were in the prophetic ministry because it is said about them that uh, in Acts 21, now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied. We know that the entire God's intention for the whole uh, set of believers was to flow in prophecy. According to you know, Acts chapter 2, where, where Peter stood up and he said, your sons and daughters, right? Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. So everyone was meant to flow. Uh, in the gift of prophecy, but when the Bible says, when Luke writes, now this man had four virgin daughters who prophesied, he's making an emphasis on another level of prophesying. So likely they were the prophet ministry or they were prophetesses themselves. And that is why it's uh, spoken of in that manner. So as we can see, God never stopped from from prophesying. Uh, uh, there are certain issues that people bring up uh, because of certain you know, difficult passages where uh, 1 Corinthians 14 over there says that uh, women be silent in the church. So we should look at it in its own context. When you look at 1 Corinthians 14, for many things, Paul says silent. He says in a, in a group, 
wants to prophesy, uh, that don't do that. Be silent. Like, let one person prophesy, then the others prophesy. So even in that context, he says, be silent. So then do we stop prophesying? Or, I don't know. There's an order which is asking us to uh, uh, use when we prophesy. So in that way, there are a couple of times that you know, be silent. Uh, uh, times when he says be silent is women be silent. There is a reason why you know, he actually says that it's in a bodily manner. It's not to say that women cannot prophesy or women cannot minister. So when we look at uh, Ephesians chapter 4 over there, uh, we know that gifts were given. Jesus gave gifts uh, to men, and then it talks about the fivefold ministry offices in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8. Now, based on this, also, sometimes people say that uh, gifts of the fivefold ministry have been given only to men because the English translation says he gave gifts to men. But when you look up that word men, it is a gender neutral word in the Greek known as anthropos. Anthropos can be either a male or it can be a female. So just because our uh, common language is translated as he gave gifts to men, it does not limit the fivefold ministry offices only to men. Women are also called into the office of a prophet. Uh, so, yeah, some points there about women and women also called to prophesy. So we don't see any restriction on women prophesying. Neither do we see any restriction on uh, women who called to the prophetic office. So any questions, any thoughts regarding this particular subject? Okay. All right, so that also is clarified for us. Now let's move on. Uh, chapter 16 here. So there are some practical issues that uh, uh, we must be aware of as far as the prophetic ministry is concerned. Uh, the first thing is the prophetic ministry is being used to uh, manipulate and control people. So that would fall under the category of uh, spiritual abuse okay it's so sad it's so sad that there's been a term like that uh, but unfortunately uh, you know it can be taken to the extent where so-called self-style uh, you know they they use the us as the lord every now and then uh, and uh, they may not necessarily be uh, addressing or releasing a genuine word from God, but it might be a guesswork, or it might just be, you know, some utterance which they have. Uh, but their intention is to to uh, to keep people under them, so they know that if they can give a prophetic word, if, let's say for example, you know that there is a person who is really desperate for a child, and uh, you keep giving them prophetic words about, you know, how God is going to give you a child and this and that, but this is what we're talking about. We're not talking about a genuine mistake. Sometimes mistakes happen when we are trying to do the right thing. We're not talking about that. But intentionally, when uh, uh, the prophetic gift is used in an ungodly way, it's very serious uh, for someone to be doing these things. But imagine a person like this intentionally manipulating a vulnerable, uh, let's say, a lady who desires a child. Why? So that she continues to stay in the church or she continues to give her tithes and all. There can be so many motives behind it. But overall, that's not right. It's not the, the right way of shepherding God's people. So uh, we must be very, we must totally stay out of uh, such ungodly things and you know, self seeking motives. Uh, in the church, there are many such stories where people might come and share and they say, oh, you know what happened? This is what happened. They prophesied like this, but it wasn't true. Uh, it makes it sad, but it doesn't mean that just because such incidents have happened, we stop pursuing what the Bible recommends. 
Bible does say desire, honestly desire spiritual gifts. So we can encourage that. We can say, oh, I'm so sorry that we went through this. Uh, but, uh, you know, God does speak. God does speak even today. So people are there. There are lots of people who have come out of uh, such controlling uh, uh, relationships within the church. And it has hurt them deeply. Uh, it has even, uh, you know, sort of... Uh, it's, it's affected their faith uh, in such a way that uh, they've gone through seasons uh, of doubting God. So uh, there are abuses and we, we must know this. We must uh, stay away from it. And if we come across something, we should be able to protect the people as well. Uh, so what are some of the other things that we must be uh, aware of as far as the prophetic ministry is concerned? Um, Prophesying for money. I already said that when we prophesy, people become very happy. Okay. So if I give a prophetic word, like God is opening doors for you, you're going to the nations, we won't be happy. We, everybody will be happy. Uh, but if it's a genuine word, yes, let's give it. But if we want to get something from favor from the person, and that's why we are prophesying like that, it's like the error of... Uh, uh, you know, Bala, he wanted a reward, and that's why he was ready to prophesy. Uh, God doesn't like that. Even Gehazi, uh, you know, that Elisha's servant, as soon as uh, uh, Navan was uh, healed, he ran after him to get some reward, something in return for the healing that had taken place. But thank God, you know, Elisha, in the spirit, uh, he understood what was going on and asked his servant, Where did you go, Gehazi? Uh, and then he lied. He said, your servant did not go anywhere. Uh, but he he kind of rebukes him. And uh, he says, OK, let the leprosy of uh, Naman come upon you for what you have done. Because what was the intention of Gehazi? Do a spiritual ministry to get money. We will minister to get money. That's the attitude. That's such a wrong attitude. And you, you see that God has shown in his word that uh, this kind of an attitude is, is not uh, something that he likes. Okay, So we must stay away from trying to make money or profit out of the prophetic uh, gift or any other any other gift. Now next, play people's perspective. Says, who says do not see and to the prophets do not prophesy? Because smooth things. Again, we say what people want to hear, happy. What if the word of God is not uh, uh, pleasant or something the people desire? Obviously, they'll be like, oh, what is pastor saying? It's not interesting. It's not uh, exciting. But if it's the word from God, it's the word from God. We cannot be saying things that people like. You know? So that's a danger. And there's also a pressure. People, as a pastor, maybe initially when you start off, right? As a prophetic minister, initially when you start off, yeah, you're, you're doing the right thing. You're sticking to what you're hearing. But as time goes by, people build that expectation from us. And uh, they are disappointed if we uh, what pastor didn't give any prophetic word, or this brother didn't give any prophetic word. He came home and he prayed. He didn't say anything, any word from the Lord. It's OK. If you didn't hear anything from the Lord, what can you do? Uh, you know, we, we need to stand our ground. When we are not hearing something, we, we don't say, so we don't manipulate. When we are hearing something, right? it may not be what they want, but that's what God is saying. So you just go ahead and you say it. You need to develop that boldness and avoid uh, trying to play to the expectations of people. And, uh, abuse prophet's reward. So there is this passage in Matthew chapter 10, verse 41. It says, he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Okay, So there's something known as a prophet's reward. Is this valid? Is God saying uh, that when we uh, care for a prophet that we will be blessed? Yes, it is saying that. However, this one statement Okay, has been used so often 
uh, to get people's favor, to get people's, uh, you know, blessings, their offerings. So there are many prophetic ministries who have uh, done things like use this one statement. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. So they say, OK, let me bless the prophet. You know, bless the prophet with uh, so much rupees, and God will bless you with so much rupees. Bless the prophet with so many dollars, and God will bless you with so many dollars. Because this particular verse says you must honor the prophet. Right, and you get the profits reward. People are also, uh, I don't know if greed is the word, but desire. Ah, I want blessing, I want reward. So they also give so that they can get. So, in that way, it's going the wrong direction in this particular verse. So, we must not misuse that verse. Yes, and we honor a servant of God. Obviously, there is a reward to that, uh, but you know, to use it to get money. Uh, is is not I think to do. Okay, moving on. Uh, thus says the Lord. We already talked about spiritual manipulation, spiritual control, spiritual uh, sort of uh, abuse. Now, even when we say "thus says the Lord," a, a person can use it to get something done, whatever they want done. Thus says the Lord. You have to marry this person. What, what happens to the believer now? Are you pastor said God is saying, God is saying I have to do it. You know? So believers, they end up making decisions because of thus says the Lord. Thus God said it. It's a done deal now. There is no other option. But as leaders, as those who are you know, serving God, is Oh, but there is a seriousness uh, when we use something like thus says the Lord. So we have to be careful. Only when God is telling us, you say it like that, thus says the Lord, should we use it? But in all other situations, we, though we are ministering under the uh, anointing and inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we allow for a submission of the word, for the person to verify the word, judge the word, confirm the word, and then apply the word. So uh, we shouldn't be controlling people, you know, with the term, thus says the Lord. Uh, now, here is another pitfall or a problem that has happened in the prophetic ministry. Many people give death and doom prophecies. Death and doom prophecies are, you know, uh, warning. Judgment, fire, because you, you're going to die. So, is it really from God? Is it really from God? See, we must understand that yes, God is a God of justice, He's a God of holiness, and uh, that uh, surely there are consequences for disobedience. Uh, but when we look at the way God usually speaks to His people, judgments come. And they must be ministered in a particular manner. So there, there is a place for judgments. But in general, in general, and especially you know, when it comes to uh, normal, let's say I, I'm just giving uh, an example for us to understand 100 prophecies that a person may, may uh, give, maybe one or two that we might, we might have judgment over people because of some serious disobedience that the person is engaged in. But invariably, if let's say 60 out of the prophecies and out of 100, prophecies, God is going to take away your job, God is going to judge you, he's judging your family, there's a curse on you. If that is the most part of what is being said, what they can understand is or the person. The prophecies has their own issues, uh, and uh, they carry a critical a judgmental spirit. In every other prophecy, the coming is destruction only. But God doesn't speak like that, and so we have to be wary. Happening, and uh, another thing that we must understand about these doom and death prophecies is whether it's a genuine word from God for. Yeah, 
uh, the person was told that you're going to die. Now, uh, he says, whether the prophecy is genuine and that person is really going to die, the fear of hearing this prophecy itself will kill the person, isn't it? Because you're like, oh, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. In December, I'm going to die. What did prophecy do? It's all in five. Supposed to do all these things, comfort the person. Is it exhorting? See, even a judgment, a genuine judgment from God, what does it do? It really turns us to repent because there is God's goodness and grace, even in the judgment. God is saying, Come on, time is up. These things are going to happen to you. Why is God even revealing that judgment? Because the person, I, like the people that Jonah ministered to, when he took the, uh, you know, the, the word of God over there and he was speaking to them firmly, they repented and God relented. Jonah was surprised that why didn't the judgment come on the people? So we know that our God is a gracious God. Even the uh, uh, judgment prophecies, uh, many a time they, they are gracious. They are from the Lord, from his goodness to cause the people to repent. But when uh, prophecies come which are bringing fear and condemnation and uh, you know such things like you're going to die and all that we can really question is it really from God or is it a critical spirit that the prophet is actually carrying so stay away from that and when you get a prophecy like this you know that I'm not going to take this seriously because it's not building me up in the Lord in any way okay coming to Weird and pathetic prophecies. <laughs> Weird and pathetic prophecies are for, uh, you know, gullible, gullible is very, uh, very new believers who don't understand much of the word yet. They're not mature. They're very, very mature, like babes. Christ. They trust everything that is told to them. So what happens? Sometimes people take advantage. So-called people in the uh, prophetic ministry. So there are prophecies, things like... Uh, you know, your home, uh, this wall of your home is curved, or uh, I, I can feel that uh, some evil is coming from this this widow. You know, what do you mean? Okay, I think it's a good thing, but what is the solution? What is the solution? Sometimes people just leave that. It just puts so much fear in the people's minds that, oh, my home is haunted, uh, and that's why there's failure in my family that's why the uh, sickness in my home after the person ministers at uh, but they no longer have hope that you know the cross has overcome everything prophecies also are, are happening people are doing things like this uh, but yeah we must really be very careful and if we find believers who've had such prophecies we can guide them and say come on don't be in fear uh, you know think about yes okay if there is an evil presence then what what are we supposed to do as a believer take authority in the name of jesus cast it out you know demolish it uh declare your home blessed declare your home a safe a secure place so this is how the right we should minister. but if prophecies are bringing fear and putting people you know capturing people in a in a, in a position of doubt then how are we actually ministering uh, to them from the Lord? So sometimes people prophesy all these weird things and leave people in panic. Okay. And the final uh, uh, section here says uh, seeking a word from God through a prophet. Now we know in the New uh, Testament, after the Holy Spirit, we, we know in the early church, the Holy Spirit was poured out. Um, it's poured out on every. So we have the leading of the Holy Spirit. Every believer has the inner uh, witness of the Holy Spirit in them. So like the Old Testament, should I go and search for a prophet? Remember uh, Saul, when he lost his donkeys, he was searching uh, for them. And the good thing he could do is go meet the seer. And the seer could tell him something. So in those days, they would go after a prophet to get a word from God. But today... If we get a word, wow, that's nice. I got a word. It's like an extra. It's a bonus. But always I can have the reading of the Holy Spirit 
and that is good enough for us under the new covenant to uh, walk with the Lord. So don't run after, oh, this prophet had to go, that prophet had to go, this prophetic conference, oh, I want to sign up for this prophetic conference. You know, people do crazy things, running behind prophets, running behind conferences, uh, but it's not required. It's not required. You can actually trust God, hear from God. Okay. Uh, but continue riding on the wave of the prophetic because uh, uh, Revelation 19 verse 10 says, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So uh, we, the more we, we hear what the Lord is doing and who Jesus is, uh, it kind of, it, it stirs up the waves more of the prophetic begins to happen and that's what this is referring to it god today is doing it god is pouring out his spirit that uh, people are flowing in the prophetic more is going to happen so we must encourage it the final uh, chapter here is about the making of a prophet and here it says like any other ministry there is going to be uh, this is particularly about the office of a prophet there is going to be uh, a preparation that one needs to go through so god may call somebody as a prophet but if you take for example people like uh, samuel you know he went through his own kind of preparation under eli he learned how to hear from the lord uh, if you take up somebody like Elisha, he ran after Elijah, he learned. Elijah was also probably part of the schools of the prophets, which were started by Samuel. So every prophet has gone through their own season. Call is there. First you receive the call, but then there is preparation. There is equipping, okay? whether it is an Isaiah or a Jeremiah or an Ezekiel, everyone going through their own you know, personal encounters, preparation. God is shaping them, helping them become more accurate uh, to hear his voice, to release his voice. So that process cannot be short-circuited. That uh, sometimes we also see that there are times of isolation. So uh, generally for prophets, it's, it's said like this. I don't know why, but uh, prophets, uh, like even like Elijah, Elisha, to our minds, it's like they are somewhat secluded. Uh, they are praying, they are seeking the Lord, they are by themselves. Uh, John the Baptist is also known as a prophet. He was in the wilderness, right, many days, just living there, trying to hear from God, commune with God. So uh, somewhere this isolation and obscurity is a part of the prophetic ministry. God uses it to shape the character of a prophet. Uh, and, and so we must embrace that. that establishing godly character god will build us up in our journey there, there are so many things each of us as ministers of god we know that uh, how he shapes our character there are ungodly things there are fleshly desires but as uh, paul told uh, timothy in second timothy 2 uh, verses 20 and 21 he said you know Cleanse yourselves, cleanse yourselves uh, so that you can become a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. So God prepares us in that way when we get rid of all the fleshly things in us, all the immature parts of us, and then God is able to use us uh, uh, as we develop that new wine skin, right, to receive what God is doing. And, uh, yeah, and of course, God will stretch us. Uh, he will help us do things that maybe we are not comfortable initially doing. Uh, but that's also goodness that He is helping us stretch so that we can actually grow. Uh, and you know, uh, a, a prophet should then take their place and begin to do what God's calling them to do. If you look at Samuel, it's so beautiful. Uh, he was equipped, but then he did so many things. He established the schools of the prophets. He was a mentor to so many prophets. Uh, he went, he anointed the king. So his responsibilities, what should I do? I need to bring the word of the Lord to the people. I have to minister to the people. He took his position. He did what God wanted him to do. So that is the thing that we must also seek after. Yes, Lord, you called me. What do you want me to do? What is my responsibility? Let me fulfill it. Let me be a blessing uh, to the kingdom of God. So in this way, keep moving forward. Is it going to be easy? No, it's not going to be easy because we've also talked about how uh, prophets have had uh, opposition, uh, even spiritual opposition. Remember, Elijah, we talked about the uh, spirits uh, 
of, of Jezebel and all that. Uh, so there will be opposition. God, uh, the, the power, the prophetic power is real, and we will see it overcome uh, every work of the enemy. So, with that, we come to an end of the prophet ministry. Uh, and uh, I, I hope it has given us some, some hope, you know, some anchor in uh, uh, flowing in the prophetic. I really wish we could do more practice sessions but we'll see how it goes uh, the next month as well so i'll try to uh, wrap up you know quickly and uh, maybe the last class or something we can just do a practice session where we are flowing in the case of the spirit okay so any questions as of now or uh, Okay, lots of inputs. All right, so let it let it digest. I'm sure God is going to use uh, all that you have learned to build you up in your ministry. So let's just close that with a word of prayer. Uh, I want to encourage somebody to go ahead and pray, and then we wrap up. Let's pray. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Paul. Okay, let's pray. Father Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word of encouragement. We thank you that you have enlightened us, you have given us wisdom to flow in the prophetic. Father, King of glory, we call upon the Holy Spirit to continue guiding us in the prophecy. We pray that all this should be for the glory of your name. Pray all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Father Paul. Uh, thank you, everyone, for connecting. All the best for your assignment. I hope you can hand it in, in time. Uh, yeah. Have a, a great week ahead, and we shall connect next week. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm grateful. Thank you. Bye. Bye. God bless. Amen.